Hello and welcome to an FPGA Vision Lecture. In this video, we will look at VHDL design of our circuit for lane detection and will implement the design on an FPGA and a remote lab. Here we have the setup of the experiment uh, we want to have in our lab. We have a graphic generator that generates an image and provides it to the FPGA. The FPGA then does image processing and uh, gives the output, in our case, to a monitor or to a frame grabber. To understand um, what's happening inside the FPGA, we will also have a look at the power consumption, which means that uh, the supply voltage, VDD, is measured with an ampere meter, and as the voltage is fixed, we can calculate the power consumption. Here you see the board that is used for our experiment. On the left side is the video input and the converter from a serial format to a parallel uh, representation of the input image. These data then go to the FPGA, which is here in the center, it's a Cyclone 5. Processing is performed and uh, the output again goes to a converter from parallel format to serial format for the output of the board. Furthermore, you have uh, some slides where you can change settings for the FPGA. The IOs of the FPGA are represented in the entity of the VHDL design. You have control signals. Then you have the video input that consists of three synchronization signals and uh, three 8-bit signals for red, green, blue. And you have video output, which again has uh, three sync signals and red, green, blue 8-bit values. VHDL files for the design are provided and in this diagram you see the structure of the design. The top level is the file lane VHD and it invokes the main signal processing which is in lane Sobel. You have the two line memories which are in the VHDL file lane line mem and uh, the signal processing also invokes the VHDL entity lane G matrix for Sobel matrix and taking the square of the Sobel matrix. Furthermore, you have uh, another file for calculating the square root and the limiting and this is lane G root IP and IP indicates that it's an IP core from Intel Altera design flow. Furthermore, you have a processing of the sync signals. They are delayed according to the delay of a signal processing and this delay is in the file lane sync. Have a look at the VHDL files to understand the structure and the functionality. With these VHDL files, we can now start the design implementation with the Quartus Synthesis tool. We start with a new project wizard. We define a working directory and the name of the project which is called lane. In the working directory, we have placed all the design files. We add them. Then we choose the device. It's a Cyclone 5. The FPGA we have is the 5C EBA 2F17C6. We generate the project. And now we have all the files in our project. This is the top level. And uh, we now add the constraints, which uh, includes position of I.O. pins. It's also provided. And with that, we can now start the synthesis. Depending on your computer, this takes several minutes. When synthesis is completed, you see the results of the synthesis. Here you see the resources that are used. You can also have a look at the timing results of the design. The circuit runs with uh, over 120 megahertz and this is sufficient because we are processing 720p video with a clock frequency of about 75 megahertz. So it's well above the requirements. 
Having completed the synthesis, we can now finally program our design on the FPGA and put the FPGA into operation. You can do this uh, with our remote lab. Uh, you have the design on your personal laptop and uh, by internet you can access our lab server which is situated in St. Augustine in Germany. You upload the bit file and uh, a test image onto our lab server. The lab server programs the FPGA, outputs the image and executes the program. Then we have a frame grabber that grabs the result and an ampere meter that measures the current. These values are recorded and sent back to you so that you can analyze the result of the experiment and uh, compare with other experiments or modify the VHDL design uh, to perform another experiment. You can find the access to the remote lab on our website and uh, without logging in you can also use it and uh, use a predefined bit file and upload uh, a test image uh, you would like to process. So it could be the road um, in your hometown. You then get as a result uh, the output of the FPGA and the measurement of the ampere meter. For more advanced experiment for executing your own design uh, you have to register with your email address and then you have full access uh, to the remote lab. You can upload your own design, you can upload your bit file and uh, perform experiments um, with the FPGA. Furthermore, you have access to a second FPGA so that you can compare the Cyclone 5 to another FPGA and um, see um, what the differences are in resource usage or power consumption. The second FPGA is also available via the same web address. Here are the steps to access the remote lab. You start at our web page and from there you go to the page uh, for the remote lab. There you can choose to perform the demo experiment. For full access to the remote lab you have to register and uh, choose a username and uh, give an email address. With this registration um, you go back uh, to the login page and uh, can access the remote lab. There you will see the available experiments and can select which FPGA you want to use for your experiment. Please note we will update the experiments and the web page so what you see might look slightly different than uh, what we see here in the video. So now you hopefully have uh, successfully implemented the design on the remote lab. Design files are provided and uh, you can use them as a starting point for further experiments. In the next video I give you some suggestions um, about experiments that you can perform to better understand lane detection and its implementation on an FPGA.